Uh, we've been working on this for oh, getting on to three years now, this campaign specifically, um, asking that Lucy be moved. Uh, we have tried a number of things. We've uh, approached city councillors. Um, you know, we've brought in a Suchak to help. Uh, we've contacted uh, the sanctuaries who have offered to take Lucy and transport her free of charge. Um, we have tried to raise awareness by uh, going down to City Hall and getting the media out and uh, standing in front of City Hall, giving presents to the councillors and just to bring some attention to this whole issue. Uh, now, Voice for Animals, way back in 97, uh, when there were some changes at the city, um, we wrote a report recommending that the city change directions. So it's been over 10 years that we've been trying to get the zoo to, to look at this whole issue of keeping animals captive in small cages and come to a different conclusion about it. Uh, my name is Melissa Murphy and a couple months ago when I was unemployed I thought I could spend my time more usefully than I was and I decided to start a little group that we call Friends of Lucy. Um, obviously there are other groups that have been working on the Lucy issue for quite some time and really all I wanted to do was a slightly different take, maybe cover, cover off a couple of the things that the other groups were not doing. Not that they are neglecting Lucy, I'm not saying that, but things like trying to get out to the zoo more often. We started a paper petition, just like I say, trying to, trying to compliment what they were already doing. Elephants in general need much more space than what any zoo can provide. Um, and then of course here in Edmonton it's compounded because Lucy is the northernmost elephant in North America. Our climate is simply too cold. She's confined for weeks, even potentially months at a time indoors and it's contributing to ongoing health issues. And I always think of it um, like with a person, if you were diagnosed with heart condition, diabetes, your doctor would treat you with medication but he would also tell you that you have to have a lifestyle change. And of course the zoo is doing a lot in treating Lucy his illness but they are not dealing with the underlying causes of the illness. Her enclosure here is absolutely inadequate. Um, it's uh, her outs I think both the barn and her outdoor enclosure is less than a half an acre in size. Her uh, the floor in her barn is concrete and uh, outside the ground is uh, hard packed dirt. And the fact that she is uh, standing so much is contributing to both arthritis and chronic foot um, infection. And chronic foot infection is actually the number one cause of death in captive elephants. So the fact that she has those conditions, um, it can become quite serious potentially. It's, it's life-threatening. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out that is that the zoo's story, if you actually look back through the history of what they've said about Lucy, the zoo's story for keeping her here does change. It changes from one year to the next. Uh, most recently they've been talking about her teeth, about how she has a malpositioned molar. Um, Carol Buckley, who is the founder of the Elephant Sanctuary, actually said that to her understanding there is no reason why a molar would cause a problem with transport, transporting an elephant. And the other thing is that um, elephants have different teeth to any other mammal. Um, you know, elephants actually have four sets of teeth. They have movement of their teeth. Their teeth actually naturally crumble and they either swallow them or spit them out as they break away. So the fact that she has a, a molar situation still doesn't mean that that isn't something that's improving itself. The zoo has even mentioned that it may just improve naturally without them having to intervene. Um, but again, we'd like to have somebody else take a look at Lucy and actually tell us what is going on. Like the, the whole concept of zoos seems so obsolete. It feels like something out of the 18th century and um, this idea of we capturing animals and putting them in an enclosed circumstance and in a um, totally alien environment. Um, it just feels unnatural and it feels primitive somehow to do this or maybe that's the wrong word but it just feels totally unfair. Uh, but to have these large mammals. Uh, one thing that really uh, stood out to me that I heard is that Zuchek evidently offered to um, sponsor, to pay for an independent um, vet, a large animal vet, to look at Lucy. Uh, evidently she's been looked at at a regular vet who, who's not specialized in large animals. But uh, they offered to pay for the bill and, and yet um, it seems like the Edmonton Zoo is totally unopened to any kind of input or or um, evaluation. If, if they could have an assessment done like that by a large animal vet, independent, we could really um, get some independent information and it wouldn't just be this asset of the zoos that they're protecting. They've got, you know, Milton Ness, who is a small animal vet, and they've consulted uh, uh, Dr. Oosterhoos, who is, who is an expert, 
but he is well known to be, you know, a huge supporter of of both zoos and circuses. It's it's he's a mouthpiece. It's he's who they go to, who circuses and zoos go to, if they want to keep their elephants where they are. And I mean, that's not hearsay or anything else. There's lots of you know proof and 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 facts to back this up. You know, he, um, in fact, he was the only dissenting bet when they wanted to move Maggie. They had 11 bets in to have a look at Maggie and decide whether she should be moved or not. Ten of the bets said she could be moved. Dr. Oosterhoos was the only bet that said she couldn't be moved. Um, he okayed two elephants for Hawthorne, the notorious renter of elephants for circuses, said they were healthy enough to perform. Within a few days, they were both dead. So he's got all kinds of, of, you know, there's all kinds of bad stuff following this guy around. And yet the Sioux, of course, they don't say to the public who it is that they're consulting. They just call him a professional. On the IDA literature, as well as Voice for Animals, Friends of Lucy, there's two sanctuaries where um, uh, these groups feel it's acceptable to move Lucy to. Can you tell me, uh, first of all, what are these sanctuaries and what do these sanctuaries have that a zoo can't provide? Well, uh, the two sanctuaries you're referring to are PAWS, the Performing Animal Welfare Society, which is in California, and the second sanctuary is the Elephant Sanctuary in Tennessee. Um, personally, our group, we always give preference to the Elephant Sanctuary for one simple reason, actually two reasons. They have nothing but elephants. They don't have any other animals. PAWS have elephants. They also have other animals. They have, for example, large wild cats, that kind of thing. Not that they keep them with the elephants, but they do have <laughs> multiple animals there. Um, in Tennessee, they are focused strictly on elephants. The other reason we focus on Tennessee is they have 2,700 acres, which is a massive area. It's the closest natural area that an elephant can live in North America. Um, pause, their area is much smaller. I believe it's 75 acres. So again, it's still many, many times larger than what an elephant in the zoo is given. But however, it is just a drop in the bucket compared to Tennessee. So The, the elephant sanctuary is probably the very best for elephants. They, not only do they have like thousands of acres to roam, but uh, they're also completely free as to whether they want to come and go. They can, they can go into the barn at night time if they want, or they can stay outside. So it's, they have total freedom uh, in the area that they're in. And uh, for that reason, it's probably the best sanctuary. Now, PAWS is also very good. The elephants are in at night, but they're on a soft substrate at night when they're inside. And I guess they do it for security reasons. But again, the elephants do have a lot of uh, sort of a varied terrain to roam on. They've got, there's water, there's hills, there's meadows, there's trees, all the kind of things that uh, an elephant would need to keep healthy and happy.